You're listening to The Dr. Chris Show. Are you tired of the short-term patch to your health problems? Is avoiding medications and surgeries important to you? If you answered yes, then your prayers have been answered. Dr. Chris has been helping people transform their health for over a decade. He's a world-renowned health expert who specializes in holistic health. He's a professional speaker, chiropractor, and international best-selling author. It's his mission to help you reach your full God-given potential through holistic health and healing. Get ready to be inspired and transformed. Here's your host, Dr. Chris. All right, everyone, and welcome to another episode where disease takes a dive and people come to thrive. And today we have a legend in our midst today. We have the legendary Udo Erasmus. He has been helping people perfect their health and vitality for decades now and has been just a a pioneer in things from uh, developing what we know as flaxseed oil today. He's been doing it all. Um, he helps people in mind, body, and spirit, been seen with on stages all across the world um, from Tony Robbins alike. Uh, but uh, Udo, great to have you on here today. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. Well, Udo, we want to start first by just hearing your story of what brought you here today. I mean, obviously you've been through a lot, um, born, <clears throat> I believe during World War II, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Can you share that kind of that story of how you grew up and just what you brought, yeah. brought you to where you're at today and your mission today? Yeah. I, I was born during the Second World War. I, I was a refugee kid before I was three. And we were fleeing mothers with young children on horse-drawn hay wagons, fleeing out of Poland westward with the communists chasing us in tanks and trucks. And there was no military presence on the road, but the allies were using the, us refugees as target practice shooting at us from planes. And it was, yeah. as you can imagine, if you're two years old, it's a little, a little hectic. Yeah. Probably not the thing you want to raise your kid in. But, And I was very shy and, yeah, anxious, shy, fearful. I liked books because books were safe. You know, nothing jumps out of a book at you. Yes. Right? So I did a lot of reading. But I got to very early, I got my nose rubbed into what happens when we don't cultivate harmony or peace or, or cooperation or whatever you want to call it, when we can. Because if we're not deliberately building a cooperative world, then we're actually drifting towards war. Mm. And that's just how it is, right? Because yeah. it, drift always goes downhill. Sure. And so it, it needs deliberate effort. We t- tend to take uh, peace for granted. You know, we hope it's just going to rain down on us without any effort on our part. But we work our butts off to build weapons and create enemies and create con- conflict. And, and that's like backwards. We should be putting, busting our butts to make, to make it work rather than Absolutely. to destroy it. So... I, when I heard people arguing when I was six years old, I was in Germany at that time, and what they argued about seemed really trivial to me. And it occurred to me, said, man, there must be a way that people can live in harmony. And I'm going to find out how. So I was like, like a six-year-old who doesn't know how complicated everything is, right? Well, you know, a lot but, of times I feel that the, the children, we, what's the saying that we learn everything we need to know? By the time yeah. we're like five years old or something, like in you know how to be nice yeah. and <laughs> yeah, yeah, before exactly. kindergarten. So yeah, you're more insightful than, than you realize, right? Yeah. So well, sorry, it was just on. simple for me. It's like, okay, yeah. harmony is better than not harmony, and there must be a way to do it, right? And so that's been my driver all my life. So I went into when it came to studying first science to figure out how things work, because my life was chaotic. I didn't know what I could depend on. I didn't know who I could trust. I didn't know how things work. So I figured if you learn how things work then you get some predictability. You get some, you know, you, some stability from that. Absolutely. So I did science to figure out how things work. Then I went into biosciences to figure out how creatures work. Then I went into psychology to figure out how thinking works. Then I went to the medicine thinking I was going to learn about health, but they only taught us about disease. So I went mm-hmm. back into biological sciences, ended up in biochemistry and genetics, and then left university because I still hadn't found what I was looking for. And I ended up getting into self-knowledge because actually when I came right down to it, I needed to know how I work. Yeah. And so that's basically is my background. And then I got poisoned by pesticides. Uh, you know, I did a lot of blue collar jobs for many years because I wanted to know what it was like to be in the shoes of the people living that lifestyle and doing that work. And it wasn't sure. like I was looking for a job. I just wanted to know that. 
Just wanted the experience. And, the Yeah, just for the experience. And it'd be usually three to six months. And then the heavy learning was pretty much done after three to six months. And then be, I'd be on to the next thing. And then I, I started traveling and looking around and doing s- silly things and stupid things. And then I had a gardening job and I got a pesticide license, pesticide sprayer license, got married, had three kids. My, my marriage broke up. I wanted to kill something. So I took a full-time job as a pesticide sprayer because mm-hmm. we know that we only make pesticides in order to kill things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I became a legal killer. Right. Right. And uh, three years of doing it really carelessly because I was really upset. I got poisoned by the pesticides I sprayed. Predictable outcome, mm. right? And I went to the doctor and said, what do you have for pesticide poisoning? She said, nothing. And that day, I realized how useful my background was to figure out how to he- heal myself. And so I went into the journals because I had the science background, got stuck on fats because I realized they're the m- most sensitive of all of our nutrients. They need the most care. They're damaged by light, by oxygen, and by heat. We give them the least care. We throw them in frying pans. Yeah. And they're damaged while they're being processed by industry before we throw them in the frying pan. And I, I said to myself, I can't get healthy on oils like that. We should make them with health in mind. And so I developed because I was sitting around and not working, right? Mm-hmm. I decided to develop a method for making oils with health in mind, where the whole system is protected from light, oxygen, and heat, so that the oil that comes out of the other end of this processing processing is not damaged by light, not damaged by oxygen and not damaged by heat. And it goes into glass bottles with the bo- dark bottles with a box around it and gets put in the refrigerator because the lower the temperature, the longer things stay fresh. So that's, awesome. that's a very, very short story. Then I got into digestion, enzymes and probiotics. And then I got into the big picture of health first through inspiration, because if you can't inspire people, they won't do they won't put, won't put even good information into practice because yes. they don't have the energy to do it. Inspiration energizes people. So that became for me, nutrient one is yeah. inspiration. And then I said, what else affects health? And realized, oh my God, everything affects health. So if you really want to be healthy, you have to give everything it's due. Awareness, life energy, inspiration or, um, or inspired creativity, the body, uh, survival smarts, you know, to be preemptive with whatever kind of crisis can occur as much as you can predict it. Sure. And then social group and then natural environment or surroundings. And then big picture that we're, we live in a temper in, in a terminal condition called the human body, which is very small in an infinite universe and to be okay with all of that. Absolutely. Well, you know, I think it's so important that, people understand that life is a journey. It's not a destination, right? It's not something you can just, you know, pick and choose like a buffet line, the things you want to focus on. It's like, you got to have, you got to look at the big picture. You got to do as much as you can be consistent as you can, uh, but not get bogged down in the details, not worrying about being perfect. Um, yeah. But yeah, like you said, it's being okay with that. Cause we are, we're just a but, small organism in a, in a big universe. And it's right. like just doing our best we can, but having the tools and the resources and what's going to make the biggest impact in our lives in that moment and in the long haul. So, you know, I think one thing we should talk about, because I think this is really um, pertinent to people right now is really just you're talking about having people around us, having that connection to the universe. Um, Cause I feel a lot of people right now are, are not feeling that connection and which leads towards anxiety, depression, anger, mm-hmm war, right? I mean, it kind of well, like, I don't know if that's well, the progression well, really, but. Well, no, well, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Not necessarily. Because if, because look, if you look at a human being, something in us is indestructible and formless. It's part of our nature. And, and that's called awareness. Mm-hmm. That never gets affected by anything. It's not affectable. You know, only what has form can lose its form. Mm-hmm. Fear and anxiety only come from the possibility that you can lose something. Well, you can't lose this awareness because you are this awareness. Life energy is like that too. Comes from the sun, goes through leaves, ends up as your fuel, and that's the energy you live on. And if you, do, if you, if you uh, how do you say that? If you meditate on that energy, if you sit still and you bring the, your awareness inside into that energy, that energy you recognize in the space that your body occupies, that space is filled with light. And you are that light because you're not actually the body. 
Because, you know, if I say to you, hey, whose body is that? You're going to say, oh, that's my body. But you've just told me that you're not the body. You've just told me you're the owner of the body and life owns the body. And life is the master that runs the entire show, weighs nothing, but runs everything, is everywhere present in the body, is all the power in the body, and knows everything in the body, you know, and uses a That's genetic right. program that it built over eons of time to, 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 as a program to run it. So that's part of your nature, just like the body, which is terminal, is formed and will lose its form eventually. That's also part of your nature. And what if we could be f fully present in all of our being instead of, you know, instead of one focus and then, see, because I can't get anxious if I'm aware. I can't get anxious if I'm in the, in, in the power that is life. Mm -hmm. It's when I disconnect from that, if I move my focus off of that and then move it into the things that change and that I can lose, then I begin to be fearful and anxious. And, you know, and when we talk about these days with lockdowns and all of the stuff that's going on, you know, and social isolation, well, I'm not isolated from myself. And my quip is, if you can't go outside, go inside. Oh, yeah. But then go to the place inside where you are whole, where you cannot be unwhole. I think that's and so spend important. Some time, spend some time there because that's an important experience to have of yourself. Well, yeah, because essentially what you're what you're describing is our innate intelligence. Is you know how I describe that. You know, yeah. in the chiropractic model is you know you have everything you need inside your body. Your body is is that light. It's that universal intelligence. It's it's yeah. our body is just that vessel, really. And uh, but so many times people have gotten disconnected from that. Like you said, we yeah. we we don't realize that. We look at the things we can lose. We don't look at this as being present. Um, and it's an easy thing to do in our society and in our culture today. But what yeah. can people start to do to start to help come back into that connection to help them kind of reset their, right. not that not that innate has to be reset. Because like you said, it's always going, it's always knowing. It's just us being a self-realization about that. How can people right. start to come back to that so they can remove themselves from those feelings of the anxiety, the depression, the, right. you know, the separation? So, so anytime something happens that you didn't want to happen, you know, because we have preferences how, of how we want things to be. Mm -hmm. Whenever something happens that you didn't want to happen, that, sh that could be a trigger to remind yourself that if you can't have it on the outside, nothing can prevent you from making what's inside of you important. See, and then focus on what you can control and focus on what is whole in you. Give that some time too. It's okay to be anxious and it's okay to wish you could be with your friends. But if you make that super important or more important than anything else, then anytime you can't, you don't have control of that all the time. And anytime you don't have control of it, then you're going to be, then you're going to be suffering. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So we need to be a, a little looser. So, okay, you know, cry your tears and feel your sorrows and feel your pains that's all part of living too. Mm -hmm. But remember at the same time that something in you is not affected and is completely whole and is in bliss and is fulfilled and is in peace and is unconditionally loved. That's in you too. Choice. So you have choice. Now, how do you get this way? Because we're really good at going out into the world. We're not very good at go coming back to ourselves. Mm -hmm. This is automatic. This has to be deliberate. Coming back to ourselves has to be deliberate. That means sit down, shut off all your distractions just for a little time, get really still. And what I say is look, close your eyes, see how still you can become. So like, okay, make it a challenge. Like, how can, how can, how still can I be? And then how deeply still can I become? And how long can I stay in that stillness? And how lightly can I breathe? And how slowly can I breathe? And when I do that, and then, and then when I'm in that space, then what is there in the space my body occupies that isn't my liver and my kidneys, but that is the energy of life within me? 
what does it look like? Because you can actually see it, you can hear it, you can feel it, and you can even taste it. But that takes some practice. And we're not good at doing that because we're not, hardly ever do we take the time to get really still and make do that exploration. But it's there waiting for every one of us. Should we, should we decide, you know, should we decide to, to, that we're willing to go on that mission? The choice is ours, right? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Now, so, what, what's missing, though, is our cultures don't teach us to become self-present. It's not in the culture. In the culture, it's always do, 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 do. But you know what? Being is more important than doing. Mm. Because you can be without doing, but you can't do without being. So if you're living your life as a doer, and most of us do, I say, you know, if you do, do, do too much, then you turn into do, do. But, <laughs> but if, we spe- if we live as our lives as doers, we're actually living without foundation because being is the foundation. Being is foundation. And, right. And so taking time, whether five minutes or 10 minutes or an hour or whatever, Taking time every day, just like you go to the bathroom, just like you eat breakfast, just like you take showers, just like you dress and undress, just like you go and drive your car, just like you go to your job. Take some time, make some time for doing as nothing as you can, you know, because you'll still be breathing. So that's doing too, right? Yeah. Well, I think so but, many people... But, that- Go ahead. You know. Yeah. So, so do as little as possible. See if you can get completely quiet. And that's your balance for your doing. And that's where your rest comes from. And that's also where your health originates in that space. Well, yeah, it's cute, though, because so many people, we don't prioritize and make big rocks in our life for the things that are really in our most value. We do the things that we think we need to do. But at the end of the day, the universe will fill our time with the things mm-hmm. that aren't that important if we don't if we're not intentional with the time we're creating. So people can right. think they're so busy. Let's face it, everyone is busy. But when we really chunk it down to the things that are priority, okay, there's an hour a day that they're on Facebook or on their phone, just mindless things that they're doing. There's yeah. you know this media this this trivial thing they're doing over here, this things that are just filling up yeah. their life and their universe and their space and yeah. it's really easy to allow the universe to do that and if we can be intentional make that conscious yeah. choice to create those habits, then we can yeah. start to create those different results, right? And so what are some other things that people can start to do maybe immediately that obviously the, the practice of what you're talking about, becoming present, self-awareness, meditation, right. breath work, those things can take some work to get into those deeper spaces and it takes practice like anything. What are mm-hmm. some things that they could maybe do right now that could even make their body, mind, body, or spirit just function at a better level. I, I do a lot of my stuff through insight. And, you know, because I look at, I examine things like you were just saying, you know, we do all these trivial things and stuff. Yeah. Everybody puts in 24 hours a day. Every human being puts on to in 24 hours a day, you know, eight hours sleeping and so many hours eating and some doing various things. Where is your best experience of your life? Look at all the things that are possible for you. And just look, actually look, look at them all. Which one would you want to have more of? Make those a commitment, right? And if, and, 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 but in terms of really discovering what's within us, that requires, generally speaking, requires some uh, stillness practice. Some people do it through music. That's their med- meditation. Mm-hmm. Some people do it by running and they get endorphins. And they do it, do it that way. Uh, but ultimately, if you really, really, really want to get to the, to the still place, you have to sit still or lie still or stand still. Okay. Uh, or, you know, and if you don't have time with your busy schedule, then when you're on the bathroom, then do your breathing exercises on the bathroom. Because on the bathroom, you don't have to pay attention to what's going on. Because it's all pretty automatic once, you know, once you find the, once you find the throne and park on it, right. then, then it's pretty much taken care of, right? And then yeah. your door is closed and you have privacy and you can, you can just like take a moment. It's just like, what does it feel like to be in this space, in the space my body occupies? What's in there? 
What is what energy is in there? And what does that feel like? And what does it look like? And does it, you know, and people, people sometimes say, oh, I'm so stressed. Well, there's no stress in the space your body occupies. You know, we trigger the stress by going to it and then taking exception to it. Then we trigger our whole stress chemistry and fry our adrenals, right? Yeah. And we're doing it to ourselves because we could just leave what's outside outside. We don't have to have an opinion on everything. And not everything has to be done our way because not, not everything will ever be done our way. So we're always going to have something to, to get stressed about. But the truth is, we create the stress by, you know, and if you want to not have the stress, then you need to disconnect the triggers because we know what stresses us. Yeah. Right. And it's different for different people. You can disconnect those triggers, but you have to do it consciously. It's always about, you got to become aware of something. Learning takes place when you pay attention. So pay attention to where you're, where th things happen that bother you. Look at what's actually going on and look at how much of what's going on that bothers you. You're actually creating in a situation when you actually have a thousand other choices you could make in that situation. But now, is there a difference so between habituated. Hmm? Is there a difference between someone just ignoring a problem, putting their head in the sand and just saying, Hey, this thing might be a stressor for me, but I'm going to ignore it. And then actually just doing what you're saying and, and removing the stressor. Like, where's that fine line? Because there might be something yeah. that someone stands up for in their, their principles to their values and they think it's important, but it's creating a stressor. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. We, some of us have a lot of principles and values that we would be better off without. You know, so, so, so I think we, we overemphasize principles. Half of the time, though, when we react, we're not reacting on principle. We're reacting on some old trauma memory or something, you know, but we don't see it because it's, we've done it so many times. And this, is there a difference? Yes. I'm not saying avoid your life. I'm saying usually when something needs to be dealt with, you deal with it better from a calm place than from a stress place. Mm. Almost yeah. all the time. Yeah. Going calmly about your, your duties is, makes you more effective than being stressed about your duties. Although we've been trained that in order to get things done, we have to be under pressure. We don't. We don't. But we, ha we do have to be conscious. And so you can, you can, the things that I would yell at, I would probably do better if I notice, okay, I'm about to make the choice to start yelling. And actually, I'm just going to go to the quiet place and stay in the quiet place. And I'm still going to address what I need to address. But now I'm going to do it in a way where I don't make it worse. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when we get stressed and fly off the handle, we take a little, a little issue, make it bigger than it is, and then create even more stuff. Absolutely. Because we're doing it, we're doing it as, a, as a reaction rather than a response. Yeah, that's key. And, you know, for the people that are wondering, okay, this makes sense to them. They, they want to get in this better place. They want to yeah. uh, get to a better place spiritually, the mindfulness, physically, just whether, maybe what, even what they're putting in their body so they can have that support system, right? That strong foundation to their health, yeah. all these things you're talking about. Um, what are some things that you offer for people or maybe some resources that you can guide yeah. people to um, that they can take advantage yeah. of? The first thing I always say to them, remember that what you're looking for, you've already got. So like start from the, that what you're actually trying to get, you already have. Everything is already built into you. You came whole out of your mother's body. There was nothing missing. Even if you were missing limbs, there was nothing missing in terms of you as a human being. Mm -hmm. Nothing missing. What happened is your awareness wandered off. Because in your mother's womb, you were, you were present in yourself because there was no place to go and nothing to do and everything was taken care of and it was safe. When you came out into the world, you had to get to know the world. So your awareness went out through your senses into the world. You got to know the world. In that process, you got disconnected from yourself. So for you started present inside, absent outside in your awareness. Now you're absent outside, uh, sorry, a a present outside, absent inside. And from that comes heartache. So what I say to people, whenever your heart aches, whether that's, you call it loneliness or longing or sorrow or loss or grief, 
or striving, restlessness, emptiness, whatever you call it, you feel it in your chest, it's a little bit uneasy, uncomfortable. What I say to people is sit with it. Deliberately sit with it. We like to dis distract ourselves from it because we don't like the feeling because it doesn't feel so good. So we get it, get into distractions, but the distraction doesn't fix it. It just distracts us. So I say, sit with it, feel it. This is your greatest gift other than being alive because it's your, the, it's your heart calling your awareness to come back home to yourself, come back home to life. And it will nag you all your life until you actually do. And when you come home to yourself, then you reconnect with in, inside of yourself to yourself. And when you're connected to yourself, you are whole, you are in peace, you are unconditionally loved. Your body is unconditionally loved by life, 24-7, 365. And even just to get the idea that, gee, this may actually be possible is a really good start because now you can begin to take a journey. You know, you can read the, the, the sayings of wise people, you know, whether you're talking about masters or sages or saints or poets or, or you know, playwrights, some of them, Shakespeare was pretty smart, you know, there's so, uh, or philosophers, some of them, but you have to take the wisdom that you hear that often people read that and say, wow, that's so cool. I never thought of that before, but that's really cool. I really get it. But you need to experience what they experienced that inspired them to that expression. Because the idea wasn't memorize my words. The idea was have my experience, I have that, that experience. And Udo. every wise person on this planet has said, what I have, you have, if you do what I do. And they took time to sit still and be just with themselves. If you do that, you can have the same experience that I'm having. This is not, I'm not a one of, I'm an eight billion of. Yeah. Everybody has it in them. We all have it in them. And so for you, though, what does reaching your fullest potential mean to you? Uh, for me, it's a, to be fully present in all of my being and my surroundings. I think that's the cherished state. Yeah. Because when I'm fully present in all of my being and my surroundings, I literally flow through life and I'm not lost in my head and going blind because you can't see when you start thinking. So if I'm fully present in, in my existence and my surroundings, very easy to respond to what's going on and to, you know, to, to flow with it and to, to ride the waves and, you know, very easy when I'm fully present. When I'm not fully present, then I get startled and then it's, oh my God, what are we doing now? And I'm not prepared and I hadn't thought about it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah. And when I'm fully present, there's none of that. That's awesome. I love it. That's a great answer, Udo. And how can our listeners uh, get a hold of you? Like, what's a good resource? Website, uh, Facebook? Yeah, or? I have a website at udoschoice.com, U D O S choice. That's where I talk about the oils and the enzymes and the probiotics and, the work, work I've done in nutrition. And I have another website called theudo.com. And we have courses and educational materials there. And then I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram and I have a YouTube channel. So I'm not hard to find. <laughs> awesome. No, you have some great resources there, courses. You listeners, check those things out. Some great stuff. Because at the end of the day, knowledge is useless without action behind it. And so yeah. I encourage everyone to take action on, yeah. on today's uh, recording and the great stuff. I feel we could talk for hours on, on different topics here today, and this could go much deeper, Udo. Yeah. So I yeah. know we only had a little bit of time. So I think we'll have to circle the wagon back around, have you on again, yeah, um, hit, on, hit on another, hit on another uh, a tangent yeah. on this aspect of things too. Cool. So we appreciate having you on today and uh, yeah. we look forward to seeing more of you and we appreciate everything you do. Yeah, and I appreciate that you you having me on and you're an amplifier for a good message. Thank you. And you have your own good message too. Absolutely. I, 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 snuck, I snuck a peek. I appreciate that. We'll talk yeah. soon. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Thanks for listening and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To get this and other episodes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to newedgewellness.com or listen to the Happy Healthy Hormones with Dr. Chris podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. 